our dealers have clocked in for another day. Seller Keith is with James Late. <laughs> Dashboard clock, apparently. I think we need to know more about this before I put any money down. I'll let you know. I've paid quite a bit for it, and I'm hoping to make a little bit extra. Uh, and that's what it's all about, really. I think if you make a little bit, you should go home happy. Let's see if James is in a spending mood. Well, it's a clock. It really tell, is. Tell me more. <laughs> well, it's 25 past 10. <laughs> it, it's, it's a bit it's slow. It's no good. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's something I acquired off a friend of mine uh, maybe three months ago. All right. Um, I've bought it off her to make a few pounds. <laughs> and what do you think it is? Why is it at such a funny angle? I think it's been adapted to look like a desk clock. Right. I actually think it's a vintage car clock. All the vintage car clocks that I can recall seeing are, are always set into the dashboard. Now, if this was set into the dashboard, it would be drooping down, so you'd have to look at it like that to look at the time. I, I know what you're saying, but as I said, it's, I think it's been adapted. So you think, it's, you think this, has been, this has been cut yes. at an angle? Yeah. So it's been ruined? No, as a no, vintage car no, clock. No, 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 no. It's been cut in half, Keith. It's no good to anyone. <laughs> Uh, and now, so you're thinking it's dating from about the 20s? Uh, possibly, yes. Yes. Yeah. I don't think it's any earlier than that, do you? Uh, maybe. I mean, it's a nice quality dial, for sure, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes. Um, and have you looked up this maker, George Gilmore? Uh, he's from Glasgow, that's all in there. Yeah. Uh, uh, even I know still... that, because it says so on it, doesn't it? Well, it does, is it? <laughs> oh, that's the first. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, but it's a nice quality enamel dial. I'm not convinced that it's a car clock. I, I really haven't seen anything that, that looks like that. Um, so, let's put some money on the table. Right. Is this your first venture into dealing? Uh, or have you been doing it for years? I'm known as Honest Keith. Um, you? Oh, indeed. <laughs> until, you came, until you came here. <laughs> uh, we'll, so, we'll test your honesty. OK, then we will. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds. Not even a sniff. Not even a sniff? Not a sniff. But it shows your profit. It doesn't. No, doesn't no, it? No, no, no. Deal. That's no. no good. We'll have to try a bit harder then. You certainly will. <laughs> uh, £70. Pounds. Uh -huh. But you're still not impressed, are you? No, no. Here's David. Now, I'm watching from the sidelines here, and I know this has gone to the right man. What we're judging this is, is a novelty item for a gentleman's desk. Uh, they are something quite desirable. 80 to 120 is what the independents have said. 70 is not a bad offer. If you fancy a gamble, you just might get a little bit more, but I don't think it'd be much more than £20 more, so it's your call. I'll try one more note, Keith. Um, I'll stick a tenner down, so that's 80. Well, if you put one more on there, I'll be in profit. Ah, so now we know where we are. Yes. <laughs> you, you've paid 80 quid for it. Yes. Do I want to pay more? That's the thing. Well, we'll, we'll gamble. So there's, there's your tenner profit, £90. That's very nice. We've got a deal? We've got a deal. Thanks very much. Thank you very you really much. You really are James. on this, Keith, aren't you? <laughs> I certainly am. <laughs> I was absolutely made up with James. He seems as honest as myself. <laughs> I'm now the proud owner of a clock of unknown use. But will James make a profit? Find out later in the show. Next, it's time for Debbie to have a dabble. The little tiny scent bottle is sweet. Anything miniature always is good. Holds its value. Um, a nice little novelty item. I am going to have a go at it. I'd like to get an extra five pound from it and just say, you know, it can go towards my holiday. It'll buy an extra martini, won't it? Well, let's see if Debbie takes to the bottle, Edith. Edith. Yes. You brought in this uh, sweet little scent bottle with yes. you today. Tell me all you know about it. Well, I acquired it uh, when I was a young girl. I used to be interested in auctions. And I bought the box that it, it was in with a lot of other things. But this was in the... Uh, that was in there? In there. What I think it is, is um, a little scent bottle that would have been hung from a lady's chatelaine. That's right, yeah. The little bottle itself has an opening top. The glass itself is nice. It's in good order. Um, it's what we call bohemian glass. Yes. And it's made by having white glass overlaid with blue glass and then etched back to create the design on the bottle. 
So I will be making you an offer, um, but it won't be a huge amount of money. Right. 10, 20 pounds. Edith, what do you think about that? Oh. You really screwed your face up there, oh, me. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> she screwed her face up at me, David. Well, you, you see, Debbie, Edith has brought along her treasure. It's somewhere between 20 and 40 pounds. Now, well, what I think is this. Our dealers have got to sell it and make a profit. Of but course. at the same time, when we get senior citizens on the show, I'm a senior citizen, and yeah. they bring along their treasures, we've got to try and get the best price we can. <laughs> I'm going to say, Debbie, can we just have a little bit more? It might not be the greatest profit, but it is pretty. And can we get another tenner out of you? I'll tell you what I'll do. If you'll give a tenner, I'll I will give a tenner. I'll give oh. a tenner. And then we know... There's my ten. And there's my ten. And then, oh. darling, we know that you've sold your treasure and got a good price for it. Thank you very much. You're so spoiled. You're happy with your 40. I'm quite happy with That's that. That's fantastic. Thank Thanks for bringing Thank it in. Thank you so much. Thank you, darling. Thank you. David, very kindly, gave me an extra ten pound, which was wonderful. A shake of his hand would have been enough. <laughs> Janice Kehoe has been joined by a bit of a wheeler dealer. I bought them at auction about six months ago on the phone, paid perhaps a little bit over the odds for them, paid £600. I thought it was all right, but with a bars premium, it was nearly 750 Best work your magic, Alan, if you want to see a profit. What have you bought for us today? I've bought this beautiful pair of Moorcroft McIntyre vases yep. in the Alhambra pattern. And how long have you had them? Only about six months. About six months? Yeah, bought them at an auction. I saw them on the catalogue and yep. quite fancied them. I do collect Moorcroft. Yeah. I've got about four or five cabinets full at home. Yep. I hadn't got any in this pattern, so I was quite excited when I bought them. And? And since I bought a bigger vase in the same pattern. Right. And my wife, who's here, says I can only collect one of each pattern. So these have to go, I'm afraid, hopefully. OK. Now, they were made about 1900. I love the shape. It's shape. That's the, what, the that's shape what is beautiful. To me, the shape is the best part made, about yeah. it. Um, they do have some rubbing, I'm afraid, yeah. uh, to the gilding. Yeah. And well, they're... that's over 100 years old. I it think is. It, you'd be worried if it didn't have that, I would think. Apart from that, they're in uh, reasonable condition. So I will make you an offer on them. Right, well, we'll see what we can do for right. you. So um, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, and 40 pounds. Wouldn't even buy one yet. Wouldn't even buy one? No. Gosh. Wouldn't even buy as a pair, always a premium for a pair. I'll, I'll go a bit further. We've got 160, uh, 170. Is that the best offer? Well, you haven't asked David. me. You haven't asked me the important question: how much I actually paid for them only six months ago. How much did you pay? I paid on the telephone 600 pounds for 600 them, pounds. but that yeah. wasn't with buyer's premium, yeah. which was over 20 percent. I actually paid over 700 pounds for them. Right. At the moment, the independent value is the same, 46. Yeah. Yeah. They are fabulous, great looking lot, goods of the moment, still in fashion, bidders out there at the auction could easily be fighting for such an item. Yeah. Unless there's a lot more money on the table, see you at the auction, buddy. I agree with you. OK, right, I'll try and do a little better. So if I take that 10 away, we go up to 200 and 50 pounds. 250 on the table, Alan. What would you like to do? Well, you've bought that one, Janice. I'll take this one back <laughs> and I'll take you £250, if that's OK. So I take it you're going to auction then? Well, if that's the best offer you can do, I'm afraid so. I'm afraid it is. I'll put that back. OK. Good luck. I hope uh, you do really well at the auction. I'm sure I'll do a lot better than that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Will Alan make his money back in the sale room? Today's auctioneer Simon Bauer has his gavel at the ready. 
You brought along a very, very nice pair of McIntyre vases. Moorcroft, of course, worked for McIntyre before uh, opening his own factory. You sat down with Janice and she offered you... <laughs> I know, she didn't know anything about pottery, <laughs> goodness me. I hope you listened to this, Janice. She offered you £250. I know. You weren't happy with that. And I wasn't. They are coming up now. The reserve is 300 quid. That's a bit on the low side. Let's see what happens. We're straight in at uh, 300 pounds. It's straight in. Straight in at 300. That's the reserve. 340. 360. 380 on commission. Creeping. At 400 bid. 420. 440. 460. 480. 500 at 500. 500. Getting near to what you paid for them now. Anybody in the room now for another 20? At 500 pounds and bid. You're all out in the room and the phone. It's with me on commission at 500 pounds and sold then. 500. 500 pounds, we have the usual dreaded commission to take yeah. on, and it makes 440 pounds. Yeah, not my best deal, no. He's a very shrewd buyer yeah. this month. Not this time. But I think you brought them to the marketplace perhaps a little bit yeah, too perhaps. soon. The real deal on the day, 500 quid, take home 440. Chin up, Alan. You made almost double what Janice offered you. Back to the action in the den where Mark Stevens has been joined by Carol. Nice you too. My expectation is that I'm going to get quite a lot of money for this watch. I've had it for a long time and I don't want to just let it go for nothing, you know? A very nice nine carat half hunter. Yes. Where did you come by this? Well, um, from my father and it was his father's, so it was my grandfather's. Right, so it's been in the family for quite a, a while. A long time, yes. Right. One thing special about this, isn't it? Yes. It's got the magic word on it. Yes, it begins with R. It certainly does. Rolex. Yes. Should we have a look? Yes, do. OK. What have you got? Very nice casing in nine carat gold. Yes. But when we push the top of the watch here, yes. and that reveals the white porcelain face with the word Rolex yes. on the front of the dial. And if we turn the watch over, so we're going to open the back up, now, in the back here, those are the three marks, hallmarks, and the full front end here is 375. Yes. But underneath there is a maker's mark, but it hasn't got Rolex on it. Oh. Because the mark, if I'm not mistaken, is ALD. Yes. Now, ALD is Denison Watch Company, and Denison were the official case makers for Rolex. Right. So it ties in perfectly. Yes. So it's very mm, genuine. It's very genuine, but we ha what we have to have, which is the key, is when we open, there we have it. Oh, yeah. Must be marked. And this one it, is one of the extra prima movements. Oh. There's extra prima, the best ones are ultra prima, um, and then you have the observatory quality. Still a good watch. Yeah. Very nice quality, ticking away. And we've got the presentation on the back here. Was yeah. this... This Your was family? my grandfather. Right. Presented in 1933. Yes. Was this for his uh, retirement present? Yes. Ah, that's I thought. Well, it's a very nice thing. It's in lovely condition. And there's just one thing that we've got to do now. There is, yes. We've got to talk about money. We have. Right, shall I see what I've got? Yeah. Let's have a look in the pocket. £50. £100. £150. £200. I'm not stopping. 250 pounds, 300 pounds, 350 pounds, 400 pounds. I think I was expecting a little bit more than 400 pounds. A little bit more? <laughs> no. Yes. No, I, I, quite yes. a bit more, actually. <laughs> I think it's a good time to get David in. Yes. And here he comes I now. Think it is. Well, I've looked at it from the sidelines. I mean, it's in mint condition, it's a goer. The independent values, they've gone four to five hundred. Mm. Um, this is a man who I think will be loving that, will want to buy it. It has a brand name that he can sell like that. He's probably already got his hand in his pocket because he wants to take this home, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble is, Thank David you. can win my mind so much now, you know. Yeah, well, I've watched your telly <laughs> and I can, I think. Oh, good. Uh, right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. And I'm going to put another 50 on the table. 450 pounds now. 
Well, it sounds a reasonable offer, but I was expecting a little bit more. Just a little bit mm. more. Oh, Carol, you're driving a real hard bargain for me here. You're cutting all my profit out. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm going to do. 455 and one more for luck. £460 on the table. Have we got a deal, Carol? Yes, we have got a oh, deal. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you very much indeed, Carol. Thank you. Thank you. Something I like, something I wanted to own, and a very nice lady too. I was so pleased, I pushed him to the limit to get what I wanted.